First, live, local, this is the 8 o'clock news. A pricey puppy stolen from a local couple. The gutsy move by Fox 12's Most Wanted that left them empty-handed. Then, a deadly shooting puts a neighborhood on edge. The arrest police made in the case and why police say they are still searching for answers. But first, we begin with developing news on the disappearance and murder of a Gresham woman. Whitney was a very loving person, one who was loved by everyone. Whitney gathers to remember the woman whose life was cut short. I'm still in shock, so <laughs> it's like, wow, I can't believe it. it's their boys. I seen them grow up. And neighbors react to her accused killer's arrest. We have team coverage of the Whitney Heichel murder investigation. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Fox 12 and PDX TV. I'm Ben Singer. Today, we learned more about the acquaintance accused in Whitney's death. And tonight, the coffee shop in Gresham, where she worked, is still holding a candlelight vigil. The 21-year-old disappeared on her way to work early Tuesday morning, and her body was found on Larch Mountain yesterday. Late last night, Gresham police announced both the discovery of her body and the arrest of one of her neighbors. Jonathan Holt is being held on charges of aggravated murder after several interviews and results from the crime lab linked him to Whitney's car. The cause of her death is still unclear. To say that this case brought fear and anxiety to the community is a vast understatement. As we watch these events unfold, Whitney in many ways represented all of our wives, daughters, sisters, friends, and loved ones. The mayor of Gresham also saying, despite the growth of the city over the years, this case shows how tightly woven the small town fabric remains and praised the collaboration of law enforcement and the public. Many of those mourning Whitney's loss attending that vigil tonight, held by her manager at the Oregon Trail Starbucks on Northeast Burnside. They've gathered outside the Starbucks where she worked as a barista. The vigil started at 6 o'clock. People still showing up as we speak. KPTV's Kai Porter is live there at the very emotional gathering. Kai. Been a lot of people out here at the candlelight vigil tonight are simply too upset to talk to us about Whitney. They are still in shock after search crews discovered her body late last night. Let me step out of the way so you can see that the uh, vigil right now is starting to wrap up, but we have seen a variety of people out here tonight from Whitney's close family members to complete strangers who were just touched by her story. I prayed to God that I know I know she's in a better place and I don't understand why people do the things they do. People in the crowd wore yellow in Whitney's memory and placed flowers outside the Starbucks where she worked. They sang Amazing Grace while they huddled under tents as a light rain fell when the vigil started. A large group of Whitney's co-workers stood in the front of the crowd and lit candles while they shared memories and hugged each other. Some people who never showed up, or I, sh I should say some people who showed up, never got the chance to meet Whitney, but they were so moved by her story that they wanted to be here to show their support for her family and friends. I also spoke with a lot of customers who knew Whitney because they got their coffee from her every morning on their way to work. Whitney's former high school classmates were also here, and they say they will never forget her smile and friendly personality. It's something you just can't comprehend. I think everybody's still kind of in shock from the whole thing and coming here even I'm kind of holding in my tears but it's just like it's amazing because it's kind of a, a celebration of her life you know more than and than being upset that she's gone because we all are sad that she's gone. And Whitney's family members also attended the candlelight vigil tonight, but they were too upset to talk to us about their unimaginable loss. And if you would like to help Whitney's family, they have set up a website where you can donate. That website is findwhitneyheichel.com. Reporting live in Gresham, Kai Porter, the 8 o'clock news. And a solemn morning at that Starbucks as several friends and co-workers paused for a moment of silence for Whitney. Pastor Jamie Worley led the vigil at 7 this morning for seven minutes of silence. That was the time Whitney would open up the shop for the day. Local coffee shop Real Time Coffee Roasting is hosting a donation drive through Sunday. The shop says they're donating 50% of their sales directly to Whitney's family. The store owner says they all know Whitney at the shop and the donation drive is their way of helping out. She's one of those people that you meet and she just leaves you feeling wonderful. She's one of the sweetest, kindest, generous person you'll ever meet. The drive started today and will continue all day tomorrow.
The search for Whitney took investigators across Multnomah and Clackamas counties. While detectives followed the trail of clues to Larch Mountain, officers canvassed her apartment complex. Gresham police say a tip led them to Whitney's neighbor, Jonathan Holt. KPTV's Kate Cagle has more on the suspected killer. Police say tip led them to interview Holt on Wednesday when they brought him in for a second round of questioning later that night. His stories didn't quite match up. Investigators then took fingerprints and DNA and they say yesterday morning a crime lab linked Holt to Whitney's car. Just a few yards away from where candles burned in memory of Whitney Heichel, the home of her suspected killer is empty. Jonathan Holt's motorcycle still sits on his porch at the Heatherwood Apartments. He was booked last night into the Multnomah County Jail, charged with three counts of aggravated murder. The news has rattled neighbors. It's hit way too close to home. Over in northeast Portland, there was no answer at Holt's parents' house today, but neighbors had heard the news. And I'm still in shock, so <laughs> it's like, wow, I can't believe it. it's their boys. i seen them grow up. There were little kids when they showed up here. Neighbors tell me the Holt's had lived here for 16 years and that Jonathan attended nearby Park Rose High School. You can ask for better neighbors. I mean, the boys were really respectful. And yeah, they kept to themselves. Kept to themselves, definitely, most definitely. Yeah, this shocks me. Shocking, very shocking. Tonight, there are still few details to shed light on a possible motive. Police say Whitney Heichel and Jonathan Holt were only acquaintances. Neighbors at the Heatherwood apartment say Holt had only lived here a few months. Before that, he lived with a woman here in Northeast Portland. Next door, a neighbor told me they kept to themselves. They just seemed kind of quiet, maybe a little odd. Police want to encourage viewers to continue to call into their tip line. They are still collecting evidence. Holt is scheduled to be arraigned on Monday. I'm Kate Cagle, the 8 o'clock news. And stay with Fox 12 for continuing coverage of the Whitney Heichel murder case. We are closely following every development and we'll bring you the latest right here on Fox 12 and our website, kptv.com. Police arrested a man believed to be involved with a deadly shooting in the Lentz neighborhood early this morning. It was breaking news on Good Day, Oregon. Police say they found a dead body on Southeast 82nd and Flavel. Police arrested J.C. Brister and charged him with unlawful possession of a firearm. Witnesses at the scene told us about hearing the gunfire. I heard something that appeared to be like a muffled shot. I thought there was two, but apparently there was only one. Other than that, I didn't see anything. Brister was booked in the Multnomah County Jail on $2,500 bail. Police have not released a possible motive for the shooting and have not charged Brister with murder. A vigil was held today for the Newburgh toddler killed in a car accident while his sister pushed him in a toy car. Family and friends wore white t-shirts and carried candles at the corner of 4th Avenue and South Meridian Street in Newburgh. That's where baby Alex was hit and killed by a car in an accident three weeks ago. The driver of that vehicle was not sighted. Investigators say he was traveling under 25 miles an hour and blood and urine samples turned out clean. Alex's family hopes to raise awareness on the safety of pedestrian crossings with their vigil. Family and friends remembered Kaylin Morris's life today in a memorial at Forest Grove High School. Kaylin was killed in a car crash in Aloha on October 6th. It happened near the intersection of South Gassner and Grabhorn. Police say her boyfriend, Scott Harris, was drunk when he lost control of the car he was driving. He pleaded not guilty to a manslaughter charge related to her death. There are now more than 100 confirmed and probable cases of salmonella after an outbreak at a Vancouver restaurant. The Clark County Health Department has confirmed 38 people got sick after eating at On the Border on Southeast 164th Avenue. There are another 75 probable cases. The restaurant did reopen Monday. Several food handlers did test positive for salmonella, but only those who were not affected were allowed to go back to work. Still, no answers as to what caused the outbreak. Here we have some pictures from a webcam at Mount Hood Meadows this morning. Look at that. The ski resort says they received two inches of snow in the base area so far, more higher up on the mountain. The forecast indicates that they could be getting two to four inches of snow each day through Wednesday or Thursday, but it will not be enough for them to open for the season. But Sophie says you won't have long to wait, so just be patient. You'll be paid off, right? Yes, so? we're going to keep the cool showers in the area for at least the next seven days. And most of that moisture, I think, will translate into snow anywhere above 3,000 to 3,500 feet. Let's show you the live radar right now. And uh, you can see some spotty showers out there, and they will be continuing through the night and into much of tomorrow as well. Some of those showers are pretty heavy, as you can see in the spots of yellow, just in east of I-5 there near Sandy, and also some thunderstorms 
thunderstorms popping up on I-84. We're going to hold on to the chance for some thunderstorms through tomorrow as well. Here's a look at the rain totals for the day, about a quarter of an inch for Portland. But you can see it's very spotty. Some places like McMinnville and Salem got less than a tenth of an inch. Temperatures outside. Boy, it has been a cool day, hasn't it? 45 degrees right now in Portland, 47 degrees in Eugene. And look at the rapid cool down. Thursday, we're at 68 degrees, 60 degrees for a high temperature yesterday, and today only 53 degrees. Well, even cooler temperatures are moving our way. I'll have more about that coming up in your seven-day forecast in just a few minutes. The 8 o'clock news is just getting started. All they wanted to do was sell their bulldog puppies to a nice home, but Fox Tell's Most Wanted had another plan. We got a hold of the puppy first and took off. The dangerous turn an innocent sale took and why these dog breeders are scared for their puppy's safety. Then, the masked gunman knocks off a local tavern, how he managed to take off with money from the bar's lottery machines. Plus, a controversial police officer getting his job back, the latest on Mayor Adams' fight against Ron Frashauer. You're watching the 8 o'clock news, first live local.